you want to get into medical school, but you found out there's a bunch of hurdles you have to go through first. One of these being sitting the UCAT. You want to start preparing, but you have no clue where to start. Well, don't worry, you're in the right place. I'm going to go through what I did to prepare for the UCAT exam. I was able to get a score of 3,100 with a band one in the UCAT, and I'm going to be studying medicine at the University of Nottingham in September. I understand how demanding the medical school application process can be. So I'm going to go through and break down step by step what I did to go about preparing for the UCAT. Just to be clear in this video, I'm not going to be going through questions that could come up in the UCAT, but rather how to prepare for the exam as a whole. I'll be making videos in the future on how to go about the different questions in the UCAT. So be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any of those. First, I'll give a brief run through of the exam. So it's a two hour exam with five sections, verbal reasoning, quantitative reasoning, decision making, abstract reasoning, and situational judgment. Pause the video now if you'd like to see the breakdowns of how many questions and how long each section is. The first question you may ask is, when should you sit the UCAT? The biggest tip I'd say is to sit the UCAT in the summer holidays before you start year 13. Once the school term starts, you will be overloaded with work and having to still prepare for the UCAT will make that so much more difficult. It's not worth the stress and your score will reflect this as well. I sat my UCAT on the last day of the summer holidays, so the day before school started. I was initially planning to sit it after the first week of school, but I moved my test forward by a week and it's perhaps the best decision I'd ever made. So how long should you prepare for the UCAT? Many people feel like they should prepare for the UCAT months in advance. But I'm telling you from my own experience and from speaking to others, this is not the best way to go. Many people say that you can't revise for the UCAT because it's a cognitive ability test. But I'll tell you that is complete rubbish. The general rule of thumb for the UCAT is to prepare four to six weeks in advance. So book your test and count back four to six weeks for you to start your revision. This is a tried and tested method and it is proven to give the best results. I stuck with this and it worked wonders. Initially, I planned to revise for five weeks. So I booked my test and started my revision five weeks before that. But as I mentioned, I moved my test a week earlier. So I ended up preparing for four weeks in total. It's so important that you don't prepare for too long for the UCAT as you'll probably burn out and your scores will start to drop as well. So each day, how long should you prepare for? Within this four week period of my preparation, I spent about two to four hours a day with about one or two days off within the whole four weeks. I know this sounds intense, but I promise you it's not as bad as it sounds. Just, you know, wake up early, just spend two to four hours and then have the rest of the day to yourself. If you get into a routine, and get your UCAT preparation kind of done in the morning, it'll really help make things much easier for you. So what should you use to prepare for the UCAT? There are several resources out there, the most popular perhaps being Medify, which I'm sure you may have heard of. I personally use MedEntry, which is a similar platform to Medify, and I found it to be really helpful and the user interface was really nice to use. I preferred MedEntry to Medify, but to be honest, it's a personal preference. Another thing I really recommend you having for your UCAT preparation is getting a keyboard with a number pad, a mouse, and perhaps even a monitor if you can. And this will really help to simulate kind of the environment that your test will be in. Having a keyboard with a number pad will allow you to use a UCAT calculator much, much faster, which is really important under the time pressure of the UCAT exam. So what did I do each day for my preparation? I'll split my preparation into phases by weeks. In my first week, I spent time getting used to the questions on the UCAT. I focused on two sections a day. I would attempt a bunch of questions on one section at a time with no time pressure initially. I would then go through my answers to see whether they were right or wrong. And if they were wrong, see what mistake I made and what the actual answer is. Now, MedEntry was really helpful with this. Medify is good too and they show you where you went wrong and how to do the question and the correct answer for it as well. So essentially the first week was just to get used to the questions and to figure out kind of strategies of how to answer them. I found YouTube to be a very useful tool during this period. There are hundreds and thousands of videos out there with tips and tricks and strategies 
for each types of questions within each section of the UCAT. In the second week, I would try to start doing more timed questions. So I would do small batches of one section at a time still, under timed pressure. I would again focus on two sections a day, perhaps three if I felt more optimistic. One of the biggest things about a UCAT exam is the time pressure. So ensuring you're focusing on timed questions early on is so important. In my second week, I also started doing subject-based mocks. So essentially the same number of questions as in the real exam, but just doing one section at a time, also under time pressure. This was really good as it helped me to kind of learn the strategy towards answering lots and lots of questions of one section under timed pressure and how I should go about it in the real exam. I also did a full UCAT mock at the end of this week just to see how my progress was so far. When you do your first UCAT mock, don't expect to have such a good score. It's a long draining exam and your scores will improve as you keep practicing. In the third week, I basically only did subject-based mocks. I also started to introduce more full UCAT mocks as well. I did another two full UCAT mocks in this week, one in the middle of the week and one at the end of the week. It's really rewarding seeing your progress, but if you get a bad score, it's nothing to worry about. You've still got time and there's more practice to be done. I started my fourth week focusing on the sections that I found hardest. For me, that was abstract reasoning. I then did a full mock every single day for that last week and I saw my scores fluctuating a lot. It can be very disheartening seeing your scores decrease so close to your actual exam, but it's completely normal for fluctuation here and there and I wouldn't worry too much. On the day before my UCAT, I told myself I would not do a full mock because you know if I got a bad score, it would really stress me out. Instead, I just did a couple subject-based mocks on some of the more challenging sections for me and then I spent the day just to relax. So that's essentially an overview of my preparation for the UCAT. Now it works really well for me and it might work well for you too, it might not work well for you, but I'll give you some top tips that I really think you guys should stick by to make sure you're preparing in the most effective way possible. First, don't spend too long preparing for the UCAT. You will burn out. Sit your UCAT before you go back to school. It will save you so much stress and energy later on. Invest in a question bank like MedEntry or Medify. Stay consistent and have a regular schedule. So like I mentioned, I did my UCAT preparation in the morning just to get it out the way and then it felt like I had the rest of the day to do whatever else I needed to do. My final tip is just don't be disheartened. Keep working hard, be consistent, you can do it. Have that positive attitude. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment and subscribe. Look out for future videos where I'll give you my specific tips and tricks and strategies for answering the different questions in the UCAT. If you have any queries, please feel free to ask and good luck with your preparation.